بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالار خان ہیر the next topic of today the standard forms in the boolean algebra okay standard or this is also called canonical forms standard or canonical forms So we got two standard forms or canonical forms mentioned in this book. Uh, we'll be studying them. The first one is the sum of products form, also called as the SOP form in shortcut. And the second one is the product of some form why are they called like this so we'll be seeing them okay this is also called as the pause form in shortcut all right the sub form and the pause form are the two standard forms in boolean algebra all right so let me take the colors the sub form discussing the the sub form first the first, sub. Remember for both of them that the sub form, first we'll discuss in the sub. So the sub form is written directly from the truth table. They are written directly from the truth table. And they are written when? When are they written? They are written only when the function's value is 1. Only when the function is 1. Okay? And what is the method of writing them? The method. So it's a simple method. You go for the truth table, you find out where it is one, you just write those bits, uh, write those bits in an anded form. But how in an anded form? They are written in the complemented form. Complemented if they are zero. And written in the non-complemented form if they are one you'll see you will have a better understanding when you see the examples okay here i'll be taking an example but first the theoretical one in the standard form uh in the standard form it will have in standard form we have all the variables either in complemented or non complemented form And I'll tell you the difference in the end. All right. So in the standard form, when it is written directly from the truth table, we have all the variables either they are in the complemented or in their non-complemented forms. Okay. And I've already told you before that if you have n number of input uh, variables, so we have, so we have what 2 to the power n total input combinations total input combinations and how are they given a 0 0 0 0 0 1 that was discussed uh, earlier as well but today let me show you a trick to remember them so in the in the least significant bit in the last one in the last bit you change only zeros and ones once, okay? 
like this 0 1 0 1 in the second one in the second row you change twos 0 0 then you change it a 1 1 okay then if you have a third row so let me write over here if you have a third column mean if you have a three variable three variable so it means two to the power three is eight so then you do what you have to change four each four zeros and then four ones let me write it down somewhere over here for you uh, let me remove it all right so how is this written if let's say I got three inputs three inputs so this implies we have a total 2 to the power 3 is equal to 8 combinations all right so how is this written 0 1 by changing them directly after one another in the second row you change two of them 0 0 1 1 0 0 1 1 all right and then in the third you change four of them 1 2 3 4 so this is the way for three if you have a fourth column you change after eight all right if any, you have a five variables you change after 16 and you go like that all right now uh, let's discuss an example on this so if let's say a function is given let's say these are the inputs all right I've, I've written them already so let these be the inputs let me remove this and have a look if these are the inputs let's say this I, I write it down over here if this is let's say a this is B this is C so we have three variables a B and C and over here we have the functions value for these three variables so let's say we have some values for it 0 0 1 0 1 1 1 and 1 all right now the decimal equivalent the the decimal equivalent for 0 0 0 is 0 which means this is the term 0 let me write it down with the red color the decimal the green color decimal so this is decimal equivalent of 0 this is for 1 this is for 2 this is for 3 4 5 6 and 7 so we have it up to 7 how did I write those? I'll be showing you when we are discussing the number systems. We'll be showing how to convert from binary into decimal. All right. Now I told you that we write the sum of product form only for those where the function's value is one. So the function's value is one over here, over here, 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 and here. Now we will be writing them in an added form with each other. All right. And we'll be writing what I as I told you if it is a one so we'll be taking it as it is and if it is a zero so we have to complement that so the functions value is one at min term number two now what is this min term I said a term min term min term is the and term written all right as I will show you so this this first one this is m0 m1 m2 m3 m4 m5 m6 and m7 so min term is represented by a small m and how many min terms do we have we have 2 to the power n minus 1 min terms if we have n is the number of variables so how to write this function's value in a, as, a, as a min term so we see this f is equal to the min term m2 is high m4 m5 m6 and m7 
M2 plus M4 plus M5 plus M6 plus M7. These small m's represent the mean term. These two, four, five, these represent the decimal equivalents. This plus is for the R operation. So now, what is this M2? I told you. Now this A is low, so I will be taking A complement. B is high, so B is as it is, and C is low again, so C complement. Similarly over here, the plus is as it is, A is high, B is low and C is low. Okay? Over here, A is high, B is low, and C is high. A, B are high, and C is low. And then all of them are high. This is the value of this function written. Now this form, this is called the sum of product form. Why is this called the sum of product form? Because have a look, we are summing, we are summing the values who are protected with each other. Now look, this is a product, this is a product, this is a product, product and product, and they are all summed with each other, which makes it a sum of product form. Now this is the standard form, as I told you, this is the standard or the canonical form. Now we reduce this form by the rules of Boolean algebra. We reduce this logic expression. All right? So, have a look. Blue color over here. Let me write the first one as it is. F is equal to A complement, B, C complement. Then we have what? A, B complement is common, these two. So I write common, A, B complement. And what happens? C plus C complement remains. In the next we have A, B common. And what happens again is C plus C complement remains again. So we've already seen that A plus A complement by the rules of Boolean algebra is 1, which makes this a 1, which makes this a 1. And then we've seen that anything ended with 1 is again the same thing. A ended with 1 is again A. And similarly, A plus A complement is 1. These were the rules. So I write them down. Uh, the value of the function is A complement B, C complement. From here we have A, B complement. From here we have A, B. Now from here we have A common. So this function is A complement B, C complement plus A is common. So we have B plus B complement again. And have a look. B plus B complement. This would be again 1 and this again. And A again and it with 1 would be again A. So we are left with a simplified version, which would be F is equal to, and I also rearrange it. So it's A plus A complement B C complement. We have seen that A plus A complement B is equal to A plus B. Yes, we've seen from the rules that A plus A complement B is equal to A plus B. All right, so here we have A plus A complement and then the B is this, B into C complement. So we can write the final expression as F is equal to A plus B times C complement. This is the simplified version of this function. This is the simplified version of the standard canonical form and also called as the minimal SOP form. Minimal SOP form. Why it is called the minimal? Because this is the minimized form. Okay. In the minimal form, each min term, each min term, does not necessarily have all the variables as we can see from here. So that was, I, I told you that I'll be telling you in the end, and let me write it down over here, that, uh, where should I write? 
Okay, I will rub this. So, the minimal sub form, the mean terms in minimal sub form does not have all the variables as we can see from here okay okay so i believe this is all for the sub form i've told you that the sub form is written from the truth table i've told you that the sub form is written directly from the truth table and is written only when the function's value is high and if the if the variable is one we write it as it is uh, unprimed unprimed mean non complemented and if the value is zero for the variable we write it as a prime means we complement that variable we write this as an and terms and plus we add we or the next min term to it all right so that's all about the sub form see you in the next lecture maybe with some examples on the sub form till then take care goodbye